A Shalom Akiam Wa Akwath, giving all praises to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahushai Wa Raha Don't save her, she don't want to be saved. Worry or be concerned about the elect. That's the uh, title of this lesson, Lord's Will. Giving all praises to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahushai Wa Raha this is Issachar coming back once again with an uh, edifying lesson in the spirit, Lord's will, to edify you, brothers and sisters. And the uh, inspiration of this lesson came out of this uh, worldly music I was listening to during a uh, plantation, okay, during uh, work. Uh, one of the uh, area managers um, played this song. Okay, during our shift, and during this shift, uh, this song came out, and it was on it was on repeat. On the on, on the lyrics, uh, and this is written by J. Cole, which you know I don't. It depends on you know a brothers and a sister spirit. You know some brothers do listen to worldly music, you know which there's something wrong with that. You know as long as you're, um, you know not applying. What they're uh, teaching in their musics, you know, at times, you know, Jake want to listen to worldly music, you know, to give him uh, uh, some type of nostalgia or uh, ecstasy, so to speak. But, um, you know, in my case, you know, I still listen to worldly music, but not as much as I did. Okay, once I came into the truth, okay, it's a... Uh, you know, I try to uh, diminish these uh, worldly songs because they do have a, a some type of, uh, you know, the demonic vibe to it. But this one here, okay, made a lot of sense. J. Cole, um, I've never heard it. Actually, I've never heard it. Um, should matter of fact, I don't even know who J. Cole is. You know, I, I'm actually a brother that listens to music from the, uh, you know, 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. After the uh, late 2005s, okay, that's when I stopped, you know, listening to these um, modern day rappers. But hey, this one by J. Cole, okay, no role models. And that's a spirit, man, because Jake in the world, hey, he has no role models, man. Every role model that Jake has, okay, it's, it's what, uh, Latino culture, you know, black culture. Native American culture, which, you know, Native American culture, you know, Gad, the tribe of Gad, they still keep their, uh, some of the customs, and they do push for that, that a warrior spirit, hey, but, but even Gad, you know, they're starting to, uh, it being the spirit of, uh, you know, Ephraim, the spirit of uh, Issachar, Zebulon, listening to uh, Chicano, Latino culture uh, music, which the modern day times, of uh, the the Israelite music man is is very demonic, okay. You know black culture and you know everything has to do with you know over sexualizing. You know the uh the, the Israelite man, you know pushing for the uh the agenda of the serpent Esau Edom. But let me get to the point. Um. And one of the lyrics, okay, one of the brackets right here. Okay, and it has it on repeat. It says, don't save her. She don't want to be saved. And it keeps repeating that for about four, three, four times. But also, even at the end, it tells you here in the middle and, and end. Okay. And this is and this is biblical, man. Don't save her. Worry about the elect instead. Okay, and the her, first and foremost, collectively... That's symbolic to the nation of Israel, of the non-elect, including the men. This is a two-fold scripture. Okay, Jeremiah 6 and 2. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. You see, so the Heavenly Father, okay, he sees the nation of Israel collectively, including the men, like unto a delicate woman. But now, the uh, physical aspect as well as the actual physical woman. Okay, a lot of these uh, so-called sisters, 
that even those that call themselves Israelites and the truth, really, they don't want, they don't want to be safe, man. Okay, they still want to be in this world. Okay, kind of like uh, the example of uh, Lot's wife. See, hey, you you might have a, a sister in the truth, and hey, she might be sincere, but a hey, once she sees old hell breaking loose, hey, she might turn back. Okay, to to eat uh, ancient Egypt or modern day Egypt. Okay, remember Lot's wife, right? And Lord's well, I'm able to pull those precepts out. But this also includes the man. You know, that's why uh, in Psalms 51, it speaks about how we, we, we got to be consistently praying to the Heavenly Father to not take the Holy Spirit from us. Because they, once these uh, these uh, devils, you know, once Esau eat them, really um, squ squeezes his uh, new world order, he starts pressuring the whole world to take his uh, his stamp, his stamp, okay, his uh, his karakma, his uh, badge of uh, servitude, okay. Hey, a lot of these uh, spiritual women, and when I say the spiritual woman, a lot of these uh, comely, delicate women, the Israelites, men and women, a hey, a, hey, um, they're not gonna want to be saved no more, man, by by um. By Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, man, because the, the pressure is so much, they they rather bow down to the uh, the image of the beast, and that's the spirit because the elder apostle Tahar just right now he's doing a, a video premiere video entitled uh, "Don't be <clears throat> don't worry about bug outs, okay, only be concerned for the elect and um, the elders apostles always tell. The younger brothers, hey, uh, don't, don't worry about these bug outs because really the these bug outs, though we still tell them their judgments, okay, and you know you might be a young brother that wakes up to the truth and you want to save everybody of of the nation of Israel, but that was never part of the Lord's uh, program, part of His plan, okay. The the plan of the Heavenly Father, man, is. Is to uh, primarily worry about the elect. This is Second Ezra nine and and thirteen. And therefore, now this is the angel Uriel speaking to Ezra, which Ezra is symbolic to us brothers who are in the highways and hedges. This is uh, verse thirteen. And therefore, be thou not curious. How the ungodly shall be punished, you see. Or in other words, just they, they don't worry, man. Don't worry about these bug outs. Don't worry about these uh celebrities. You know, we we do make videos about you know uh, these different uh, rappers, celebrities, but only when it's linked to a Bible prophecy in terms of you know, only a, a few of them will will get saved pursuant to prophecy, but if you put your whole mind into trying to save, you know the, uh, you know the, the best athletes and the, the best rappers and you know things of that nature, man. Uh, hey, the Lord's not concerned with that. That that's a, that's a waste of time, man. You know, primarily our job, our number one mission, is to get out there, the highways and hedges, preach the gospel, the good news, to who? To the poor, to the meek, to the humble, to the lowly. Okay, to the brokenhearted. Okay. And the judgment for those who the, the Lord is not concerned about, hey, that, that's on them, man. You see, the, the Lord's going to take care of that. Now we do, again, like I gave the examples, we do give um, these uh, different spirits who are potentially of the non-elect, we, we give them their judgment in the hives and hedges. Okay, but hey, but that's about it. We, we do it quickly, man. And if we uh, see through the spirit of the sermon, we see that these uh, spirits are not potentially of the elect, man. We quickly let them go. You see, that's an example of verse 13. Be therefore not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire, you see, look for how the righteous, which are the elect, shall be saved Who's the world is 
and whom the world is created. You see that? Because in the kingdom of heaven, man, when Yahweh Shai comes back, he's not coming for no black man. He's not coming for no Native American man or Latino or, or, or Gentile. You know, he's he's only he's only coming for those who know and their spirit that they are the Hebrew Israelites, their their nationality, man. He, he's not coming for no uh rapper who who's still uh who's still smoking weed. You know, he ain't coming for no uh, Israelite woman who's still committing adultery with his uh, with his husband. You know, he hey, the the Lord ain't coming for no effeminate man either. Okay, a very 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 so soft man to the touch. Okay, he's he's not coming for a man who who knows he needed to go to the highways and hedges. Okay, to to do the work, but. But but he didn't, okay. And the Lord's gonna get get rid of these uh these spirits, man. Hey, like they say in in uh, ancient Spartan, you no, know, which is our culture as well. You know, our forefathers when when they were our Spartans, which we we still are Spartans, but back in the days during the. Uh, Spartan, you see, if you're useless, hey, the Lord's gonna get rid of you, and that's an example of those that will not be saved. Okay, we're not we're not concerned about uh, those outside the circle. Verse fourteen. Then answer I and said, I have said it before, and now do speak, and will speak it also hereafter, that there be many. All right, this includes the heathens, but. Primarily, the focus is within the, the nation of Israel. And even within the nation of Israel, there's the elect of the elect, okay? And even the wicked of the wicked of our people. So there's the, there's different, uh, uh, how can I explain? There's different groups, different worlds amongst even our own people, okay, who have their lots. And you can read that in the book of Ecclesiastes. I believe that's the fifth. The fifth chapter, when you read it in the NOT, it speaks about how every man and woman in this uh in this earth, okay, they all have their lots. Okay. Verse 15. I have said it before, and now do speak, and will speak it also hereafter. So that's the spirit, man, because uh verse 15, that's actually a a scripture of uh, re reincarnation, man. Okay, the scriptures speak about how you come back every 70 to 100 years, give or take, you know, depending on the will of you, how about you now shy. Um, and hey, Ezra's is back, man. Our our forefather Ezra's, he, he's back here in the reincarnation. We don't know who he is, but he's out there prophesying, like it tells you here in verse 15. Hey, he said that he will speak and speak it also hereafter. Okay, the, the, the afterlife, you know, people try to, uh, in this world, they speak about the afterlife. Well, guess what? The afterlife is, you come back on earth and, and the reincarnation every 70 to 100 years. Same spirit, different flesh. You know, you might look a little taller, okay, a little bigger, okay, or, or, or maybe a little shorter, okay, different uh, uh, skin tone, but the same spirit. Okay, it says that there be that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. You see that? And those who perish are those who hey, we're, we're not concerned about them, man. Okay, we're not concerned about these uh, bug outs, these uh, scoffers. Yeah, we make videos about them to edify the flock, to uh, mark them that cause divisions, contrary to the doctrine that we have learned. That we have learned. But then what? Then we avoid them. Okay. Worry about the elect instead, you see. So, let me go into the word elect. But first, let me read Wisdom of Solomon 4.15. This the people saw and understood it not. And why is that? Okay, the, the people saw, okay, you know, the uh, strangers of the uh, salvation of, of the elect. Okay, but primarily... The people saw the uh, 
the prophets in the highways and the hedges. You see, in the in the agora, which the word agora in the Greek simply means a uh, a, a place of debate, a place of debate, a place of uh, um, you know, you know, different philosophies, but you you only have one true one, true philosophy, and that's this truth, man. Whether you want to believe it or not, okay. And a lot of these people don't understand why we're in the highways and hedges, including these bug outs, because the Lord has planted them, man. Okay, neither lay they up this in their minds that His grace and mercy. Okay, so the Lord's grace and mercy, His redemption. Okay, the reason why Yahweh Shai redeemed. The nation of Israel, starting with the elect through his blood. Okay, that's because he has grace and mercy to his saints. And who are the saints? The saints are the Israelites. Psalms chapter 50 and verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Okay, and who are the people that made a covenant with the Lord by sacrifice? Well, read Exodus 24 chapter. And also Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, but spiritually, the uh, saints that made a covenant with the Heavenly Father by sacrifice and spirit, hey, those are the prophets, man. Uh, the men, first and foremost. Okay. Um, it says that his grace and mercy is with the saints. And that goes back to Romans, the 12th chapter, where Apostle Paul spoke to the Israelite foreigners at Rome, which those Israelite foreigners at Rome who woke up woke up to the truth. Hey, they're back out here in the uh, reincarnation in modern-day Rome, which is Babylon the Great. Romans, the uh, 12th chapter, it says the, that you make your bodies a living sacrifice, okay, um, holy and acceptable to Yahweh Ba'ashim Shai, which is your reasonable service. So here, this precept, Wisdom of Solomon 4 and 15, it's only speaking about the elect, man, of Israel. And it tells you here that his grace and mercy is with his saints and he has respect unto his chosen. You see, so the Lord's chosen people, okay, which is the word chosen, it means to be elect, elect or eclectos. This is Isaiah 45 and 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. I have called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. You see, the Lord is in prophecy. He speaks about his elect. Okay. This is Isaiah 42 and 1. Behold my servant. Who are the servants? The prophets. Okay. And the, all the prophets are men. So the Lord really, he's concerned first and foremost only for his men. Okay, his prophets, anyone outside the circle, hey, hey, the Lord don't care, man. Now, you do have um, brothers that have, you know, wives and, you know, uh, you know, daughters, sincere sisters. But, but really, you know, though, though the Lord is uh, dealing with them at a, a very low level, well, really... You know, I'll take it back because uh, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, is not um, dealing with us, you know, uh, at that level, if I'm making sense. That's why Yahweh Shai, our mediator, he's the one that's actually really dealing with, with the prophets and pursuing to the order, the order of uh, my, my chosen deck, which is Yahweh Shai, the, uh, the only way for Really, for a lot of these women to be saved, it's through, it's through having a man of the Lord, a husband. Now, in a case-by-case -case basis, you know, you would have sisters who who are of the elect. They might be uh, you no know, single. You know, they might not have a man of the Lord. They might be widows. You know, a, a, those are just um, case, uh, rare cases where the Lord will actually intervene and save those sisters. Okay, and those sisters will be given those new bodies as well. Okay, this is uh, Isaiah 42 and 1. Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, 
in whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him. And then speaking about uh, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai, he's, he's the main servant. He's the main prophet. But under Yahweh Shai, uh, is, is the uh, men of the Lord, which we believe are the uh, the elders, apostles, on down to the younger brothers. Okay, they are in the uh, best position to be the these men who are uh, doing the work, who are teaching the whole law and the testimony, who are doing, who are executing. Okay, the prophecies written. Okay, and in, in, in the holy book, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentile to the Gentiles. You see, so that includes the prophets, man, because uh, Yahweh Shai spoke about how him being the master. Okay, he, he will be uh, also having his uh, his students, his disciples, and the uh, disciples will receive an inheritance. As Yahweh Shai, they will be joint heirs. Okay, <clears throat> now let me get to the point. This is in the uh, in the Greek, the word elect. This is Romans eight thirty three. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Yeah, because you're gonna have a lot of accusers, a lot of scoffers, mockers. A lot of men and women who are going to try to uh, take away the salvation or the uh, crown of uh, brothers, man, primarily. Yeah, because if you're a brother in this truth who consistently teaches in the highways and hedges, you know, you're dedicated to your craft, you're putting your best foot forward while catching hell, while going through all types of battles, infirmities. You know, physical battles, spiritual battles, primarily is a spiritual battle. Okay. Hey, um, hey, the, the Lord's gonna still justify you, man. He's gonna protect you, he's gonna stand up for you. Okay. If if you if you're of the elect, hey, no matter what, man, you're going to you know stay loyal, you're going to stay uh uh grounded, man. You see. So really, there's no one outside this uh, truth, you know, no bug outs, no, uh, no Edomite, no Ishmaelite, no Muslim, no Islam, no, no religion that's going to, uh, okay, take you away from the Lord's uh, power, man. Romans 8.33, who shall lay anything to, to the charge of Yahweh's elect? It is Yahweh that justifieth. You see, it is the Lord that shows mercy. It is the Lord that shows grace. Okay, he has respect unto his chosen. Who are the chosen? Primarily the prophets. Okay, the the, the main, uh, the uh, protagonist, you know, like in every movie you have important roles. You got the, the protagonist and the antagonist. And I always speak about that in a lot of my lessons. Okay, you can even read about that. Uh, in the book of who is Esau Edom. They give the example of uh, William Shakespeare. How in a lot of his novels. A lot of his books. He he goes into that. How this. Uh, you know. The, this reality that we live in. It's a movie man. And everybody's an actor. Okay. Uh, some are. Uh, better actors than others. Okay. But even within. Some actors. Okay, there's actors that just act. Um, okay, naturally, and and that's the prophets, man. The prophets are natural actors. Now you have actors that fake it. Okay, if you know if I'm making sense, and those who fake it, man, those who are, those are the spirits that the Lord's gonna get rid of. Okay, a fake actor. Okay, but a, a real actor, man, he's gonna flow naturally. Okay. It's going to uh, <clears throat> it's going to be the uh, the elect, right? Unless the word eclectos. Strong's G fifteen eighty eight, eclectos, eclectos. You see, it says eclectos by implication, favorite. So yeah, the Lord does have favorites, man. Okay, there's no no way around that, you know, because you have a lot of these uh, Christians, 
which you know brothers call them a wacky tacky Christians. Yeah, a lot of them are are bucked the hell out, man. And and all they speak about is um uh, God loves everybody. You know, he has no favorites, but it tells you here. And all throughout the uh, epistles and letters of Apostle Paul, he speaks about how how um he wrote to the elect. He wrote to the beloved. He he wrote to the us, uh, which the word us, it's a uh, processive uh, pronoun. You see, it says favorite, chosen, elect, picked out, chosen by Yahweh to obtain salvation through Hamashiach. Christians, which, you know, the original Christians are the Hebrew Israelites, are called chosen or elect of Yahweh. The Messiah is called the elect. And we just read that in Isaiah 42. Okay, the, uh, the servant who is going to bring forth judgment amongst the Gentiles. Okay, Yahweh Shai, really, the word, he's the main uh, protagonist of the movie. You know, the Yahweh, he's the director, right? The uh, the one that wrote the script, you know, the um, the blueprint, pretty much. And then the, the, the main character who's executing his movie is the word. And the word is Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai came on the flesh, man. Literally, the word... Um, uh, life and, and and its purest form came on here in the uh, terrestrial plane on flesh man that's crazy okay it says the messiah is called elect as appointed by Yahweh to the most exalted office conceivable a choice a select the best of its kind Pfft, man the lord's about quality man so if you're a bug out, okay, if, if you're a bug out, if you're a, a Israelite man or woman who's who's just about quantity, who's just about uh, numbers, okay, you're not about quality, you're not about uh, building the kingdom, you're not about uh, about that life, <laughs> you're not about Yahweh Shai, man. Hey, really, the, the Lord is not concerned about you. So a lot of these sisters, man, uh, when we say sisters, you know, we uh, we speak about the Israelite woman, you know, because the Israelite woman, you know, they, they are they are sisters, <clears throat> though they're not of the non-elect. But when you speak spiritually, you know, speaking as a man, every uh, Israelite sister is a sister. But like it tells you in the scripture, spiritually, uh, not every sister is a sister and not every brother is. It's a brother because every brother will, will supplant. You see, and that's when um, the uh, statement of an elder apostle Tahar comes in place. He made a lesson. I believe that was like around three years ago. Um, and this lesson was entitled, You Have to Be Very... Uh, what was the word? You Have to Be Very... It wasn't greedy, but selfish. And in this truth, man, at times... You know, you know, you might be amongst brothers, you know, and when you're bro when you're with brothers, man, you have to be, you know, sincere and not selfish because that brother next to you, he's also fighting for his own salvation. But outside the circle, you got to be selfish w with your salvation, man. OK, you got to be a uh, um, austere, selfish, because even your Howard Shai said, don't cast your pearls before swine, man, because they swine will trample upon okay your your words your your uh your diamonds you know he's gonna um you know you put diamonds you know within or you throw diamonds or gold or silver to a pig man you know and, and a pig is mainly you know in the you know domestically you know in the mud and pretty it's, it's an unclean animal man and that unclean animal is symbolism to a lot of Israelites who you show them the truth. You know, you waste your time just trying to trying to wake them up. OK, but they're not they're not concerned about the diamonds, the gold, you know, which is the kingdom. You know, they're more concerned about this world. OK, and that's why it's a waste of time man, to just, you know, go back and forth, man. And the Lord hates that. 
Now, if you're a young brother that's been doing that, the Lord will ex exclude you because, uh, you know, you're a new brother. But when you're older now, you're more mature, more seasoned. Okay? The Lord will show you why he's not. Uh, he don't want you to be going back and forth or uh, worrying about these uh, bug outs. Okay. It says the best of its client or class excellence preeminent applied to certain individual Christians, which are Israelites. So we're only here to the best, for the best of our kind, man. Okay, we're only here for, for, for those who want, really want to get safe, man. Okay, and and these uh Israelites, they want to be saved. Let me get the, the scripture. And you could tell, man. You could tell when, when a when a, a sister or a brother. If you have the spirit of discernment, you can tell when a sister or brother, you know, wants to get um, uh, saved or not, man. You see, Genesis 19, 26. But his wife, and, and this wife, that's symbolism to the uh, Israelite woman. You would have brothers that, you might have a, a sister, you know, you know, as a wife. Um, she might be your girlfriend. Um she might be in the truth, but when when that squeeze comes through, okay, that whole uh, a loyalty, pretty much the woman's morals will be uh, thrown outside the window, man. Okay, a lot of these uh, sisters, okay, they're gonna look back. Okay, and and it's not literal, you know. You're running and you you look back. I mean. You see that in movies, you know, you might get chased or there might be some kind of, uh, you know, uh, ambush attack and and you're, you're trying to run for safety. Of course, you're going to look back, you know, to see if the danger is still approaching, man. No, this is not a literal looking back. OK, this is a, a spiritually looking back. OK, from behind. Really means uh trying to be part of this kingdom man and Lord's will this uh, lesson is edifying giving all praise to you make a part two shalom